everybody it's kelly with inky hands warm hearts how are you guys i am so happy to be here with you and once again bring you another really fun project i designed this fantastic little witches brew kit kat treat box um i don't know if you guys know but kit kats at this time of the year come in this really cool witches brew holder like isn't this such a cool wrapper and not only that, but they're green Kit Kats. So they're super cool. They're um, marshmallow flavored cream um, Kit Kats is what it states on here. Crispy wafers in a marshmallow flavored cream. So look at how cool these are. And I had to make a really cool witch to go with these um, Kit Kats. So this is the box that I came up with. It's a pretty slim box as you can see and our little witch kind of takes over. So it's really like you're ha handing somebody this cool witch and when you open her up inside are the Kit Kats. And then I've used the witches, um, the best witches stamp set to add a little sentiment inside that says, if you've got it, haunt it. And that cute little witch just to cute it up a little bit. But I think it turned out really awesome. And I am gonna show you guys how to make this cool box today. So it's super easy. Um, my pattern for the witch itself will be out in my newsletter. So if you are not signed up, for my weekly newsletter. You can go to inkyhandswarmhearts.com and on the sidebar on the PC, um, I have two forms. One is for my email newsletter and it'll say email newsletter sign up. And then the other one is for blog updates so that as I post blog posts that you would get an update of what is posted on there. So there's two forms. So you definitely want the email newsletter if you want my PDFs. Um, I am doing quite a few PDFs for my projects and they're all going to be located on my newsletter. So make sure you sign up so that you can get this cool PDF. Um, for this super awesome witchy poo and um, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way. All right. I'm gonna put her in the corner here. Hopefully you guys can still see her and we can get started. Um, let's go ahead and do our box first and then we'll worry about our witch and decorating our box. So for the box, you need a piece of Parakeet Party cardstock, and this piece is nine and a half inches by three and three quarters. So you can get two of these boxes out of a sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. And so we're getting the Simply Scoreboard out. You guys know how much I love this board. And down the long side, we are gonna score at a half of an inch, at four and a half, at five, and at nine. And then we're gonna turn it to the short side. So this is the um, three and three quarter inch side and we are gonna score it at half of an inch all the way down I know you guys aren't gonna be able to see all the way down because the camera won't capture it But I'm going all the way to the end and then three and a quarter inches. So just two scores on that side Let me get our simply scoreboard out of the way and then I will show you in the camera the score marks for this box so those are the score marks. That's what they look like when you're all done scoring. And we're gonna go ahead and burnish on all the sides. So I'll do the two skinny sides here first. And then I will open and I will do the skinny side here, the skinny side here, and then the one in the middle. All right, so that's what it looks like once it's been burnished. So now you can see the score marks probably a little better. So we're gonna do a little bit of cutting. So you can see it's exactly the same proportion. So it doesn't matter which side is the bottom. 
but once you've selected your bottom, that has to stay the bottom. So we're gonna use a thick bladed scissor, not our paper snips. You can see how thin our blades are on our paper snips, and these are a little bit thicker. I like them because they help me cut away the thick score marks. So I'm gonna cut these little squares at the bottom completely off. All right, and then these two here in the middle, we're gonna cut in. And I'm kind of angle cutting that, but I'm leaving the side straight. So I'm only angle cutting the small tab here. I think I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm cutting straight on the score mark, and then I'm angle cutting. And then same thing on the other side, straight on the score mark, and then angle cutting, and then that forms that little tab right there. So we've cut these off. Now on this one, we're gonna cut, instead of sideways, we're gonna cut from the top in. So I'm gonna come straight in here, and I'm also going to cut straight on the side, and I'm gonna tab this side. So I'm gonna cut straight on this side and then tab the little square part, okay? So let me lay it down and then if you guys wanna grab a screenshot, you can. That's what it looks like when you're all done cutting. So it's not that much that's cut away from the box actually, just some little cuts into it just to form, help us form our shape. But not much is wasted of cardstock to bake it. All right. So this part here is going to form the flap that goes on the inside. This is our lid, the part that has the little squares cut off. This is the lid of our box. This section here is the bottom of our box, and we need to turn these tabs in and attach them. Both of them have to come in and be glued to form our box. You see how that's forming? So what I'm going to do is get my wet adhesive. I like to use the multi-purpose glue because it's super strong especially for boxes. I'm just gonna put on that one tab and I'm gonna hold it in place and grab that, get that to grab real good for me. I'm gonna do the other side now, get our tab, put it inside, get it to grab for me. Okay. Same thing with these tabs, only we're gonna do them on the back end. So I'm gonna fold this part down and then these are gonna get put in just like that, okay? So let's put um, a little adhesive on my tab. My tab's gonna come in. I'm gonna hold it in place so that the corner meets right there. And just make sure it's a little harder to hold in the back because you have that um, the lid that's hinged, but it's not too bad. And then we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna put adhesive on our tab and we're gonna turn the tab in and then we're gonna hold that in place so that that tab is um, glued down and that forms our box bottom. Okay, so there's our box. These sides are gonna come in and this is gonna get pushed inside. Okay. And then that's our box. Okay. I think it turned out pretty good. So let's go ahead and get started on the pieces for the inside of our box. So for the inside of our box, we are going to, um, decorate that with a piece of Highland Heather. I don't know if I wrote this one down. I can just measure it though. I, have a, I always have a little ruler on my desk. Three and three quarters by two and a half. And this is what our witch is gonna get stamped onto. 
And then I have a scrap piece of Parakeet Party that we are gonna stamp our sentiment onto. And then um, I will talk to you about the um, parts for our um, witch herself and what sizes you're gonna need of cardstock for that. So that will be fun also. All right, so let's go ahead and stamp our witch. Here she is in all her cuteness. We're gonna use Memento Tuxedo Black. And I'm gonna ink her up. I like to ink when it's a larger stamp. Bring the ink pad to the stamp like this rather than the stamp to the ink pad because it's a larger image. And so we're gonna put her down here at the bottom because we need to leave room for the words at the top. So I'm just gonna press her down and give her a little, little burnish. There she is. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. What do you guys think of her? Isn't she adorable? I'm gonna clean my stamp and get that ready to put away. And then I'm gonna grab my words and the words say, if you've got it, haunt it. Again, I'm gonna ink that up. And since I've already started the tradition of bringing the pad to my stamp, I'm just gonna continue. <laughs> but this one you could have put in the pad. So then this we are going to um, stamp onto this scrap piece of our um, parakeet party. Just make sure that it's nice and inked. There it is, cute. We will clean this stamp. Squeaky. All right. So that, I'm gonna show you the inside one more time. So now we're gonna cut the two sections into strips and then we're gonna pop them up at the top of our little witchy poo there. Let me close her. So that our witch shows nice because we're going to work on her next and we need to be able to see her. All right, so we're going to go ahead and cut this and you can use scissors or a paper trimmer. Um, either or works. I have this little guillotine cutter that I just keep at my desk and so I'm just going to use it because it's here. But if you don't have a paper trimmer near you, then just grab your scissors because it's small enough that you could easily um, trim with your scissors. It's a small piece, so it's very simple to trim with your scissors. I don't wanna get that little apostrophe off of there, do I? I have to be careful. All right, that apostrophe sticks up a little. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and cut them in half. go if you've got it haunt it I'm gonna take a little bit more off the bottom since the top is pretty close there we go and I'm gonna trim the sides as well all right so there are our words we're gonna go ahead and get rid of our little pieces that I trimmed off. And we're going to attach those onto this piece with mini dimensionals. So let me grab those. If you guys haven't watched me before, I tend to use a lot of dimensionals, so you don't have to use as many as me. It's just how I am. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and glue her into the top of the box, and she's gonna fit right in there. And so I'm gonna grab my um, silicone mat because I am a messy gluer, and I wanna make sure that I don't make a mess. So I'm going to go ahead and use my mat in case I go off the sides. 
it is contained onto my silicone mat. So let's go ahead and glue her inside the box. And there's a little border all the way around of the parakeet party. I trimmed it so that there would be a border. That's the dimensions that I chose, the two and three quarters by, um, was it three and three quarters? Yeah, two and three quarters by three and three quarters. Oh no, two and a half by three and three quarters. Two and a half by three and three quarters. And that's for the um, inside with our witchy poo. And then our words are gonna go. I'm gonna grab my take your pick tool. I like to use these when I am pulling the backs off of my dimensionals because I like that they all stay stuck to the back. And then I can throw them in the trash can and they don't end up on my craft room floor which is the best place for dimensional backings in the trash. Okay, so if you've got it, haunt it. Oh my gosh, that's so cute, right? So there she is on the inside of the box as a surprise. We can go ahead and put our candies in here. I made the candies because the way that the wrappers are, I didn't want them to get squished because I really wanted the little witch to show and see her hat goes to this top part of the wrapper. So I made the box to fit these wrappers flat like that. So let's go ahead and close up our box. And then we are going to take a blending brush and some parakeet party. All right, my box doesn't want to close, and I don't know why, because it closed just fine earlier. It's giving me a hard time now. Come on. There we go. I don't know why it was giving me a hard time. So there it is. So we're going to use some Parakeet Party, which is the color of the cardstock itself, and a blending brush. And we're going to ink that up, and I'm just going to add a little bit a parakeet party all the way around because remember this is her face and we want to kind of give her a little bit of shading okay now I have also cut one of the fish um, from the fish punch I think it's called fish builder this one right here so we're using this fish there's two sizes and this is gonna be her nose so I'm gonna ink this up as well with my parakeet party and get that nice and inked up and a little bit of shading on there. Now I don't need to do the tail, that's gonna be pushed back and that's gonna help lift up her nose off of our box. And then I also have a piece of parakeet party that I cut out with my tiny circle, which is I think 3 eighths of an inch. Let me grab us a piece of scrap paper. We're gonna start shading these. I keep scrap paper on my desk. So we're gonna go ahead and add, and this is gonna be the wart on her nose. So I definitely wanna add some color to it so it pops. That's it for the green. Then I've used um, a circle punch to do her eyes. I've used the one inch circle punch for basic white for the two eyes, three quarters of an inch circle punch in Highland Heather for the inner part of her eyes. And then the same size as the wart, um, three eighths of an inch for the black circle. So we're gonna go ahead and glue those together and have her little eyes ready. So let's go ahead and bring in our mat. And I'm gonna put adhesive on the smaller circles and then glue them to the larger. And I use my um, tweezers because I don't like getting glue on my fingers. So about right there is what you wanna do. 
again just about right there kind of a little bit off so that it's thinner on one end and thicker on the other and the cool thing about this glue is it lets you slide it so that you can move it around and we're going to do the same thing with the black centers and then i used an iridescent um rhinestone in her eye and i'll show you that in a second Then I made a pattern, I just hand drew it, and it will be available for you guys. Um, if you subscribe to my email newsletter, you can get this PDF. I spoke earlier about that, so again, I just wanna let you know. Um, go to my blog, inkyhandswarmhearts.com, it's my website, and on the right-hand side, if you're on PC, it'll be two forms. One is going to say email newsletter and the other is going to say blog updates. So if you want my email newsletter, which is where I will be sending this PDF, um, if you want this PDF, you want to get my email newsletter. So sign up for my email newsletter. That is where I will be sharing this PDF. And it is the template that I used or that I made. Um, I just used copy paper. See, I just used scrap copy paper that I have lying around. And I just drew, drew the witch's hat and I drew her hair and her hat band and her mouth. So all of these pieces will be on a PDF that you can get and you will get, you will have access to that link in my um, email newsletter. And I send those out on Thursdays. So it'll be in Thursday's email newsletter, which is cool, right? I think so. It'll be fun. And um, you'll be informed of other things as well. So please sign up for my email newsletter. If you are on mobile, you want to scroll all the way to the bottom. Um, and once you see my photo, under my photo should be the email newsletter sign up. So just click that and then you can sign up for my email newsletter from the mobile device. All right, so we have her, our eyes ready. We have our nose. Let's go ahead and glue the little wart on the nose. So I'm going to flip that over because I ink the one side and we're going to add that wart to her nose, her little fish that it is. See how cool that is to give her that little wart. <laughs> I just think she's going to be so cute. So there, that's what we have so far, her eyes and her nose. And then um, I have already cut out the pieces for her hat um, and her hair and her mouth. So here's her mouth and her hat band and her hair. And then here's her hat. Isn't she cute? She's so cute. So I used pencil when I traced it out. After you know, I made my pattern and then I traced it onto the um, cardstock. So I just want to make sure if you flip the pattern to the wrong side and you trace it, then you don't have to erase any pencil marks. And I did that for my other pieces, the black ones, but I forgot to do it for the hat. So my hat has a little bit of pencil marks on it. It'll be okay. <laughs> so let's go ahead and glue our um, hat together so this is the hat band so it's going to fit and it's going to slide into place exactly where it fits so you'll just have to slide it up and down the hat until it actually fits on there so i'm going to go ahead and put the glue on the back of that oh i need my silicone mat again i almost got a little out of hand you can see my pencil marks on this like i said i remembered and put them on the back of the black pieces but i forgot when i did the highland heather so that's why i'm reminding you so that you don't make that mistake well it's not really a mistake it's fixable for of course but um that way you don't have to worry about that and then we're going to put some washi tape on this i wanted a little sparkle on my witch and so we're gonna, the washi tape comes in a four pack. So see, it's called glitter washi four pack. So you get the four colors and we're gonna use the purple. So pretty. I love anything glittery, right? Glitter is fun. So I'm just gonna lay this across the band how I want it to look. And you put yours where you want it on your hat band. I'm going to put it right like that. 
I want to make sure that it's long enough. I'm going to stick it out a little bit, and then I'm going to trim the ends. So there's my glitter. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to trim my glitter off. My glitter washi. And you can see that my band sticks out a little bit. And it's going to be seen from the back of our box. So go ahead and follow your hat and trim that down to match. So see, I have a tiny scrap of the black. I'm going to do the same on the other side. I'm going to, I'm going to trim the hat band to match my hat. So when people look from the opposite side of my project, it will look pretty. You know, we can't always be perfect when we trace things, and so that's what paper snips are for, right? To help us look a little better. There we go. So there is our hat band fixed now. So I'm going to use our Stampin' Write markers. So we, they come in all of our color families, and they also come in black, and you can buy the black individually it has a brush tip on one end and a um a fine tip on the other and the fine tip is a zero five and that's what i use to kind of decorate the hat section here so i'm just going around and i think it just pops the hat to have a little bit of um, banding and you can do consecutive lines you can do broken lines, how I'm doing, long, short, it's up to you. It's your witch, your hat. You can choose to do whatever you wish and however you feel is best. And I am just going along and going through. Some are long, some are short. That's just how I feel like doing it today. Every day is different, right? Whatever mood you're in, that's the mood you need to, to just go with. Your crafts will, um, will thank you. All right, so there's the stitching on the hat. Again, I used my Stampin' Write marker for that. All right, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to glue her mouth on. Okay, so I want her mouth to be about here. And I want her hair to sit on the box, but only on the portions of the box, of course, that are going to open. We don't want to glue it all the way down. So I didn't glue the mouth yet. I am just have it laid up on here. And I also just have my um, hair laid up here. And then I'm going to place the eyes. I just want to make sure that I have her how I want her before I put any glue on anything. I want the eyes to be more like that. This hair looks pretty good. Let's see what if the nose fits nicely here. Yeah, I need to move the mouth. Let's move the eyes up a little. There we go. Then I have room for the nose. There's the mouth. Okay, so once I have it placed, then I can start gluing. So I'm just gonna slide her off the box. I'm gonna bring the mouth up here and then I'm gonna glue the teeth on. Um, I'll show you how to make the teeth in a second. I didn't have a pattern for those. I just used a strip of half inch basic white cardstock and I'll show you in a second. So there's her little mouth. So it's just a, a strip that I had left over that was half inch, and I just really just cut some teeth. One, two teeth. That's it. That's all I did. Simple, right? So let's go ahead and put some adhesive on the back. And glue her teeth in her mouth. Let's put this one up here first. <laughs> oh, I stuck it to my hand, of course. Of course. <laughs> I think I'm going to put this one over here. 
Oh my gosh, she's so funny, right? I love it. So cute. Should we give her another tooth? Let's see if we give her another tooth. I'll just place it up there and see if I like it. No, I like the two teeth better. <laughs> she is adorable. Okay, so her tooth, her mouth is down. So let's do her nose. I think I want a little bit more green on the side here. So I'm not even going to ink it up. I'm just going to press the, what's left on my brush. Yeah, I just, I thought it needed a, to pop a little bit more. Yeah, that's perfect. So let's go ahead and put glue just on this part of the fish. And then I'm going to put a dimensional. That's right. My trick. I'm using um, a regular size dimensional. Right here. We'll pull the back off of it. And that will help the nose kind of stand up. So we'll put this in place. She's coming together. All right, now her eyes are also raised up with dimensionals. So I'm just gonna grab one for each eye. And we'll pull the backs off of that. And let's position her eyes. Oops, I don't want to move her hair because that's where it's going to sit. I think like that. Move it a little this way. All right, so we're going to put one here. One here. Oh my God, she's so cute. Isn't she cute? She's so cute. Okay, so what I'm going to do next to do the hair and this is how I glued it. I'm going to put adhesive on my box, not on the hair. And then I'm going to press my hair down on, I mean, onto my, um, onto my box. So obviously at the top I have adhesive and then maybe down in the, just down a little ways. The rest of the hair is loose. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that off and I'm going to put three of these guys at the top. And then I'm going to take the minis. I'm going to put one here and one here because that will be covered by her hair. See? but it will still give some nice lift, just like that. So let's go ahead and pull the backs off of those. One more. And then we can place her hair down onto her little head. Bring it a little lower. Good. Press that into place. <laughs> She's so cute. My gosh, I love her so much. Okay, so now comes her hat. So the hat's going to just get glued flat onto her head. And we just figure out wherever we want it to go. And we're going to put the glue on her hair and then attach her hat. She is adorable. Okay, so I'm just going to put some glue. And let me make sure how far down it's going to go. So it's going to go to her bang. So I can go kind of low. Make sure that we're covered. And I'm just going to hold her hat in place for a second. She is the cutest. Is she not the cutest? I'm going to tilt her hat a little just because I think it's cuter. All right, now let's give her her iridescent rhinestone basic jewel eyes. Now, as you can see, I really love these iridescent rhinestone basic jewels. Let me show you what the package looks like. 
there is a full package. So there's three sizes of iridescent rhinestone jewels. I'm just, I love them so much because they take on the color that's behind them. So I think that's such a cool characteristic of an embellishment. And so I use them a lot. So we're gonna use the smaller ones. We're gonna put them in her eye and they're gonna actually take on a dark hue. So I'm gonna put one there and one here. There we go. Oh my gosh, she is so cute. See, I put her eyes closer together here. They're farther apart there. What do you guys think? Isn't she cute? So every time you make her, she'll be a little different. But how cool is this witch? So again, if you would like the pattern for this box, I mean for the, um, the pieces to make our witch box, I will put it together in a PDF for you this week, and it will be linked in my newsletter on Thursday. So make sure you sign up by Wednesday for my newsletter. Go to inkyhandswarmhearts.com and sign up. If you haven't given me a thumbs up for this video, please do so. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, I hope that you do. Um, this is a really fun way for me to express my creativity and share what I love. And I hope that you guys enjoy um, my projects. Thank you for um, being here. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. This is Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. Happy stamping!